Good evening, everyone. Welcome tonight. My name is Sharon Poli, and I am the Executive Director of the Fine Arts Work Center, and I am so pleased to welcome both our in-person audience and our virtual audience this evening. The founders of the Fine Arts Work Center envisioned a creative home in Provincetown where emerging artists and writers could live together as a catalyst for artistic growth. The Work Center has dedicated ourselves to this mission for more than 50 years. Our signature program is a renowned seven-month fellowship in which 10 extraordinary artists and 10 extraordinary writers are granted time and space to build community and create new work. And I am so pleased to look around this room and see so many of our fellows here this evening. Thank you for joining us. In addition to our signature fellowship, the Fine Arts Work Center is dedicated to amplifying the creative vitality of Provincetown, the nation's most enduring artist community. Tonight's event is part of our free public program series where we present nationally recognized artists and writers, either in person in Provincetown or via Zoom as needed or both like tonight. All events are free and open to the public. We are so honored to welcome artist Rachel Phillips this evening the Stephen Pace residence resident for Mid-Career Painters to the Fine Arts Work Center. Rachel will be with us for a one month residency and we look forward to learning more about your work tonight. Special thanks to our partner, the Stephen and Palmina Pace Foundation, who made this residency possible. It is now my pleasure to introduce Myung Son, our visual arts coordinator and past fellow to tell us a little bit more about Rachel's work. Thank you. I'm pleased to introduce our Stephen Pace mid-career resident, Rachel Phillips. She is joining us with her husband, Chuck Tiza, from Brooklyn, New York, where she currently lives and works. Rachel received her BFA from Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia and her MFA from Memphis College of Art. Her work has been exhibited in the US and internationally, including the Microscope Gallery, Nurture Art, Cindy Rucker Gallery, Regina Rex, Brian Morris Gallery, and Gallery Protégé, as well as at the Gran Sasso Science Institute in Italy. Her work was featured in Artnet, Art Maze, Bedford and Bowery, Hyperallergic, and Two Coats of Painting, among others. She was recently interviewed and featured in Decorated Youth Magazine in January 2020. Her most recent solo exhibition in 2019 was in Microscope Gallery in New York, where her work is currently represented. Please welcome Rachel Phillips. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you some slides from um, work a long time ago, well, in the 90s, and just a few slides. Um, they're not in the greatest of shape, so I apologize for that. But it'll give you um, sort of a basic understanding of where I'm kind of coming from. Okay. This is the first piece, it's a painting called Dancers. And um, it sort of shows like how much I'm interested in line and um, sort of character-based um, imagery as well as abstraction. This piece um, is called Skate Skateboarders versus Rollerbladers. It's about like 10 feet, I would say, long. And I used to do a lot of drawings with charcoal and paper and then a lot of erasing. Um, and then I started putting in these shapes with paint that um, acted as like a platform or a stage. And then I also um, used to collect a lot of objects and paint on them based on how I saw that object and the history of it 
um, and I was just kind of like trying to get a feel for it. Also, um, it was like its own little sp like artificial space or bubble. And then uh, I'm always big on drawing and sketching in my sketchbook, so I was, this piece is called Wall of, Gr uh, Wall of Women, and it's actually much larger and has a lot more women on it, but it, this is a detail. And it's um, typing paper. Um, and I used to be a secretary, so this was probably why I was working as a secretary and not doing my job. <laughs> so here's another drawing. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay, so then cut to, this is more like 2013. Um, I did a bunch of paintings that were like 24 by 24 inches. And um, they're about drawing um, and abstraction as well as like how I construct a painting. Um, I'll start perhaps like maybe with an eye or an expression, and then I'll sort of go from there. And it's not like I'm going about trying to make a character with its body, it's more like it's just one thing goes from one thing to another, and um, then what happens is it just, t like, it, it makes a life of its own, basically. The piece on the top, the, um, the crown, is sort of, it was this dried gold paint that I had picked off, picked up off the ground, and um, I put it on this sort of woman's head, and I saw it sort of as a crown, but also the sort of like mangled, um, you know, the mangled way that it was. It's just also this kind of emotional um, kind of feeling to it. This piece was entitled Crazy Table. Um, this is another piece, and in this I started with a landscape in a way, like a really bland um, brown landscape, and then I um, started applying different things to it, and it's sort of like when I'm drawing in my sketchbook because I'll start something, and then I'll like turn the page, and I'll do something else, and then I'll turn the page, and then I'll come back to those like the following day or a week later, and I'll start going back into them again. And so that's how, you know, this painting kind of developed. And it was really just all over the place until, like, I um, put in that trefoil shape around um, the whole thing going on, that whole mess, whatever that is. This piece is called Funny Bunny. Um, I started with this piece two things, I, th I thought if this is a still life, I have some sort of stability to it, and like it's sitting somewhere. So I kind of made that line with the table. And then the bunny is sort of representative of like some girl going to like, I don't know, like the Bahamas to party, you know? And so um, <laughs> anyway, so then that from there, uh, things started to emerge like, you know, the Barbie, uh, doll-like form on the top, and then to the right of the painting is the opposite of something like that, like a cold uh, tree that could also be a vessel, and um, outside of that, like, coldness is like, I don't know, I was thinking also, like, the, um, the pattern and the design, and from there, it's just this whole thing's coming out of that and just, like, riffing on that. Um, and Again, I like I, I have I use these graphic lines a lot in my work, um, and that's um, I guess mainly it's to sort of direct the eye from one thing to another. Um, and yeah, okay. This piece is entitled Clay. Um, these are all about twenty four by twenty four inches, and you know it's it's. Um, you know, I started out with the idea of like a clay pot and then went from there. Okay, this piece is a little larger. This was, this became, um, this is 72 inches by 72 inches. So I started um, doing larger pieces. 
And um, I had gone to the Met and I saw some like Islamic calligraphy art and I was, you know, influenced by that. And so um, you can see to the right of the painting that sort of, it looks sort of like the black lines, the sort of very graphic hard edged lines um, that kind of became um, something I could uh, work on as it became like a, a guitar shape and then it became this like, you know, animal shape, like a lion shape to me. So then I proceeded to make this lion with um, this kind of mane. And um, I guess I'll explain uh, that to you beca because it's like, for me, when I'm painting, um, I'm kind of like having a conversation and then things are making connections and um, I can create, I can do all these things while I think of this as something. So I'm thinking of this as a main, but then I'm also thinking of calligraphy and how it changes throughout the main, like music. So it's going from one thing to another to another and then it falls down like a waterfall. Um, so these are some of the things I'm thinking of when I'm painting. Um, and you can notice it's really subtle, but like that large drawing I showed you in the beginning, it's on this slight platform. You know, you can see a line to the left of the head and in the back, it's sort of the stage where anything can exist. Um, and then the head in the front of the painting is sort of like keeping everything from falling off the painting. So this is called What the Fuck, or WTF, I suppose. Um, and it's about, you know, being in a situation where you know it's just like you foresee a huge failure, but you just can't get yourself out of it. Um, and that sort of is symbolized for me with the WTF that's sort of written on these goggle, this goggle-like form, um, like goggles that you can't see through. And then um, it also, that shape is also reminiscent of like graffiti. Um, I was also thinking in this same painting about like theater and um, you know, different things that happen uh, in plays and like murder at a theater or absurdity and oddball sounds. Um, so, Oh, and this piece is uh, about five by five feet. Uh, I mean, I'm, I also like to use different materials in my work. So, you know, some areas are treated with glitter, some with pigment. And, you know, then I also mix different mediums into my acrylic paint. I use Guerra paint a lot, so. This piece, um, okay, this is around I don't know, 2016, 17, it was like the, around the Trump administration time when I was just like dreading what was gonna happen. It's called Witch Witch. I think it's about six by six feet. Um, and so I was just thinking of like the witch as an archetype and what that could entail. Um, on the right hand side, you see this like tree made out of matches that could just go up and smoke and um, the hand on the bottom of the painting with the six fingers is sort of um, like something like pushing all this stress away and then pushing it back into the painting. Okay, another 72 by 72 inches. So I was doing like large work now, or larger work, and this is called Bananas. And um, it's, I like this painting a lot. You know, it actually started like, you know, a huge failure, really, because I was going to start this painting with this like huge like, like you know, field of blue, and um, I didn't really mix up enough blue, and then I put it on there, and it just sort of like um, dried immediately. <laughs> so <laughs> I went from there. <laughs> um, on one hand of the paint, on one, I'm gonna talk about parts of this painting so you can, I don't know, that's how I work, cause that's how I work. So the face on the right is, um, could also be sort of like 
an abstract painting um, with a, you know, magenta pink um, line through it. But I also saw that line as um, like something like a vibrato on a violin and that sound it makes when you do a certain thing with your hand. But you could also do that when you're, you know, with a paintbrush, you do that when you're like doing like a wood grain or something. You're like, you're doing that trembling with your hand to create that pattern. And I was also thinking about a um, cherry cloth um, sweatband on some dude jogging. <laughs> so, um, and then it's housed on top of this form that's sort of like a wall. It could be like a wall, uh, peeking over a wall, but also it could be like a shirt. And I was thinking of the peanuts, and I was, um, and I treated it like as if it was, um, I was dyeing it like an Easter egg. And then from there, I, I added the egg on the bottom. This painting is, you know, about an unre unresolved situation. And then here's another painting around the same time, but actually it took me much longer. I have this tendency to um, work on multiple paintings and some come out really quickly and they're very simple. And then other ones I just have to labor for years on. And um, this one took about three years. I, at one point, started uh, sanding on it with a palm sander and I was sanding the bottom part there and um, all this like, I guess I was collaging magazines on it at some point. So that stuff started coming through and then I went back into that. Um, and so I was just getting into the patterning of it. And then I just decided to make its, it, its own space. So it's like this own, its own space that goes back and it's kind of like the underbelly of everything. Here are the two paintings in space at a gallery. Okay, this is called He Said What? And it's like, you know, about like someone saying something about you and you're like, he said what, you know? So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's, you know, the reason I painted it. But, you know, I was really into line and, um, you know, I like the, the relationship between the line quality that's housing the he said what phrase as well as um, the hand becoming a sort of, a, you know, cursive-like um, line that cuts through the, the space. This is called Lookout Rock. It's about five by five feet. Um, I was upstate when I was doing it in New York, and it was like really green there, but there was also a lot of rocks. So I like did this painting of this rock man, like, and it was like right in the center of the painting, which is like pretty obvious, and you know, I don't know. So then I thought, oh, well, maybe I should just cut it in half. So I put this line in between, you know, down the middle to see if that could, like, what could I do with this painting if I stuck a line down the middle. Um, and some things came to mind, and um, one was like this, the lines on the road, like yellow uh, traffic lines. And then um, while I was painting this, you know, um, I had all this paint that was drying up in one of my deli cups, and I took it off, and I put it on top, and I felt like it was a way to sort of ground the painting um, and bring it into some sort of reality. Um, you know, before it's just like this flat painting, and then you bring something from your process and you stick it on top, and um, it's like, so you can have what's existing inside the painting as well as something that's from the painting existing outside the painting. Um, and then, of course, it also sort of looks like the paint is coming out of that pot. Okay, this is called Fluffle. Um, it's a smaller piece. I think it's like 24 inches by 24 inches. And it was based on this uh, woman I met who was like tripping and she had this hair and she's like, you know, flipping her hair around. And I just thought it was really funny. And so, um, so I started this painting with that idea in mind. That's sort of like, I don't know, ridiculous idea. And I also, um, 
I don't know. I don't know what what the first initial thing was about, th like if I did the face yet or if I did this this um, red diamond like shape. But the d um, the red shape does have a lot of different um, meanings that I thought of. Um, one was like you know looking in the mirror or looking to avoid. I mean it could be a vagina for sure, but it also could be like a surfboard. So then I was thinking back and going, oh the surfboard and here's this like surfer dude from California. I don't know, so then the character is relating to that. And um, I took the, you know, I was using tape to mask off some of the uh, places in this painting. I usually do that, I mean, I always do that. So I had um, put it up into a ball and I stuck it on top of the painting. And I liked it, because I just, visually I liked it. And um, again, I just liked the idea of like having something from my process um, you know, be on top of this painting. I don't know if it's because I did it so quickly or what it was, but um, I just liked the play between those two. And this is called um, Red Eye. I think, uh, again, it's like five by five feet. With this piece, I wanted everything to be more simple and I wanted like big, just simple areas of color. Because I don't, you know, I don't know, I mean, I just, I guess I do that sometimes, but I would like to do that more often. And so I did it with this one. I was thinking about nighttime. I wasn't sleeping very well, so hence the red eyes. And um, the two sort of bars on the top, the orange and red, I mean the orange and purple bar, are sort of like um, hands, like a stick them up. Like in a cartoon, there's like the cowboy hat, and the guy shoots him through the cowboy hat. And then it also could be a moon. Um, and then that like big orange, I mean purple area could be, I you know, it's a nose, but it could be an abstract painting and, and the um, funny little thing hanging off its nose. This is called Sad Frog. Um, again, I think during the Trump administration, I was sort of freaked out. I mean, there was the orange cloud and then you know, the frog meme was just going all over the place and it was a bad thing and then it became kind of a good thing and then it was like, you know, I don't know, I just said the poor frog, I don't know. <laughs> um, this is called corn, it's a small piece. I thought I'd put it like a very, I do all these like small pieces that, you know, along the way and I thought it'd be good just to see, show you something that I, that I do as well. Okay, and then, uh, so then like the coronavirus thing happened and I was stuck inside for like five months, you know. So I, I don't know, for some reason I just wanted to start making sculptures. I kind of had this thing in my head, like these idea, like these images of things, like, um, like sort of like dead little cities, sort of like a dystopian um, fairy tale. So um, yeah, this is, um, wood fired it's called um what is this called lead skull that's what it's called okay another view there's the bird okay this one's called ice man um you know, it's all like it's all ceramic mostly, except like with this piece, there's the 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 nail that I put through the the um, mouth, and then this is the the flag that I made. Okay, it's another view. This one's called "Greetings from uh, Florida," and so we drove down. Me and my husband drove down to Florida to see his mother, and she has a clay studio, so I made it while I was there. And um, I, I see it as sort of representative of Florida where there's just like, it just seemed, I mean, I'm just saying when I was there, it's just like this constant mold growing and everyone's just trying to kill it constantly or whatever's growing is like being killed. And so I thought, you know, what would happen if people just stopped scrubbing, you know, every little outdoor inch of cement, I don't know, would grow again. <laughs> And there's another um, view, the bird in it, in the back, living in a skull, you know, bird living in the old skull. <coughs> this is par a w part of the wall, and I kind of treated it like a uh, abstract painting. 
And so then uh, I was also doing drawings. I'm d I always do drawings. Um, and the past few years, I've been starting to fill them in. And it's been nice because I, I, I just really like the clarity of them. These are gel pens. Uh, this is called Swanky Swan. Uh, 24 inches by 24 inches? I'm not sure. Maybe a little bigger, actually. Um, and, you know, it's a um, it's funny little painting about being trapped in your own ridiculous world. This is called Dead Garden. This is called, well, I'll show you the, uh, one of the re this is something I w at work, okay? It's like a bunch of paint, and I was getting rid of all this paint at work, and I was just really getting into the different colors and everything going, happening in all this wasted paint. So that's sort of like the jumping off point for this painting here, that brown little bubble there. Um, but it's called, it's like a small painting, and it's called Nowhere Somewhere. Um, it's also about like, I guess during the, you know, the coronavirus thing going on in New York and like all the food lines I saw that were like right down my street. And I was also like watching a show about the Dust Bowl. And so uh, that was kind of going into this painting. Okay, this is called Lost Time, again, during the coronavirus. Um, it's just about how you can't control people's decisions and what they do with their life, as well as I couldn't, you know, not being able to control your own life, not based on anything, but it's just like you can't control everything. So I was kind of letting this painting just sort of be more drippy, and I had put it on the ground, and I was like pouring, letting things like roll around. This is called Bird Alone. Um, it's a different kind of format, so it was like, I guess it's like, oh, I don't know, four feet by three feet or something. And so, you know, I had to figure out compositionally what I was doing with it, and that was pretty interesting. And then the, to the right, there's this little area, I don't know, and they had this like hole in the painting, it goes into a different world. And this is called Hot Air. Um, I was thinking about claustrophobic environments um, and also just like, you know, y you're like, you know, you're suffocating in it. Um, but also like separate, how can you create a painting that's like cl about claustrophobic, like it's claustrophobic, but then give it air as well. And so I have this like safety hatch at the top. Um, and then this completely different um, yellow triangle that goes somewhere else, is in a completely different um, place. This is called uh, Nightcap. It's um, one of those paintings that took me a really long time, and I was doing it up in my studio. Uh, you know, during the co coronavirus, I was like, yeah, sure, I'm just gonna go for it. And I, you know, would, would put these like canvases up on my wall, as big as my wall, uh, regardless of how like irrational that is and um, in terms of space. And so I was painting on this for like two years and I mean, it was just the same format for the last two years, just different colors, but not even, so then what happened was I got, oh yeah, I'm done this painting. So then I brought it downstairs and I stretched it and I was like, oh, this is not done at all. Like it's absolutely not done. So I had, I painted it downstairs cause I had some more room to like get back on it because upstairs I wasn't able to look at it at all. So, um, yeah, I added a lot more color. But the odd thing is, it's basically the same imagery. And then this is another large piece, about 10 feet um, long, or nine feet, I'm sorry, nine feet long, um, called Double Bubble, and much more simple, um, but I was done around the same time and um, I see like the, m the 
So this um, martyr bird in the center um, separating the one side of the painting that has some sort of like air and breath to it. And then to the other, the right side of the painting is more like about being stuck inside. So anyway, that's it. So if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No questions? Hi. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, you know, I don't really go in with a plan, so it kind of comes out through the process. I mean, I mean, a lot of artists, particularly, like, you know, draw first and then they blow them up, and, and still they're like, there's still a transformation, but I don't really do that. I um, start with something and then just go on from there. Yeah. Hi. Well, I mean, I like working large because I like it brings me into the painting. It's more like um, more active that way, and I don't know. I'm, it's just a different process physically standing there doing it and looking back at it. It for me sometimes I just find that more dynamic. I mean, it would be much more uh, practical for me to do smaller paintings, and I, I mean, I do try. I mean, and I do them, but sometimes I'm, uh, you know, I would like to go smaller. So, yeah. It's a whole different thing, you know. You, you get used to something, too. You know, like, I was doing those small paintings, and then I did this large painting, and I was like, whoa, what the hell, you know, like, when I started the large paintings. So that's probably similar uh, kind of idea. Mm hmm So. Mm hmm Well, I mean, I guess probably that ones that I don't even realize, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but I, I don't know, no specific. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's both of those things. I mean, but then they're not, I mean, the thing about them not being figurative is because, like, I don't go about thinking I'm going to make this figure. So, you know, it just, it starts and then it goes from there. Um, but it definitely, there's a figurative element all, like, throughout my work. You know, there's just p parts, limbs, eyeballs that just don't go away and, you know. So, yeah. And bir birds keep popping up. Right. I mean, you know, when I was starting out, I was really influenced by, like, Jim Nutt, the Harry Who. Um, but they, they, com they do things differently. I mean, I, I think they sort of plan it out a little bit more, and I have more of a, like, you know, process-oriented um, way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Hi. Oh, you know. Um 
if something strikes me as new that I've just re like seen, or it has an interesting quality to it. Um, I've done plenty of overworked paintings, and they're probably other paintings that are finished. You know what I mean? So um, there's that too, just resolving it. Um, I went, I had a painting, I guess, in the beginning um, that I could show you that I thought was done and was just hanging. I was like, oh, this is not a good painting. Um, and that was, where was that painting? Oh, duh. This painting, yeah. So then back on it. I mean, you know, who's to say? <laughs> you know, what's. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, well, thanks a lot for coming out tonight. <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much, and we're so thrilled that you're here. Get to continue to engage and learn for the whole of February, so thank you. And for those of you in our audience, we're starting our series of fellows events starting next week, the opening of Levon's exhibition here at the Fine Arts Work Center. It's by appointment only, so please do visit our website appointment to see that show. And then later this month, we'll have the first of our fellows reading series. And so all of those dates are on our website, and we look forward to welcoming you here to the Fine Arts Work Center or to the virtual space. Thanks, everyone.